Now, if you look at my potatoes, they are drying out. There are no new flowers or signs of new life coming on the plant. Uh, they're getting stringy and rooty. And so that's how you know when they're uh, ready to start harvesting. Also too, on this one in particular, you can just take your hand and feel around and you can see if there are potatoes ready. Then you know it's ready to harvest. Honest to goodness, I have no idea <laughs> where this came from, but it's so cute. So I wanted to show you how you can tell when your green beans have bit the dust for the season. Just like the potatoes, they start getting ratty looking and spindly. The, uh, my leaves start turning yellow um, and there's no sign of life, you know, anywhere on the leaves, no sign of new life. Now this one over here, I still do have uh, flower buds or new buds uh, on the plant. So I'm gonna keep this one and you know, I may be able to produce enough for uh, a dinner and I am I am getting bugs, but I, I hate using uh, any kind of pesticide. So I'm just letting them go for now. But a lot of these are gonna be coming out because they're just not producing anything. Uh, they're getting spindly, they're getting yellow. Even the beans that are coming on are yellow and droopy. I think I've had some dang melon-eating birds is what I think, because <laughs> there's another one. Oh, it's so cute. I hope it tastes good. So it is humid as Hades out here tonight, but tomorrow the heat index is supposed to be 105. And so I'm running out here this evening where I have a little bit of a breeze. It kind of feels like it's going to rain uh, to get in some harvest. So, so far I've gotten potatoes, carrots, cherry tomatoes, tomatoes, and I'm getting the last of my green beans. Um, there's nothing pretty about working hard, you guys. It's the internal reward that makes it so special. So boys, thank you for joining me today for story time. This is called The Real Little Red Hen. Once upon a time, the little red hen was scratching around in the barnyard when she found some grains of wheat. She called out to her neighbors and said, if we plant this wheat, we will have plenty of bread to eat. Who will help me plant this wheat? Not us, said the goose and the goat who hopped over the farmer's fence and into his barnyard illegally. Fine, then I will plant it myself, said the little red hen, and she did. All during the summer, the wheat grew and ripened until it was harvest time. Who will help me reap the wheat, said the little red hen. Not until you pay us $15 an hour, shouted the cow and the horse. Fine, then I will reap it myself, and she did. At last, it was time to bake the bread. Who will help me bake the bread? Asked the little red hen. We can't, said the duck and the turkey, or we'll lose our unemployment. Fine, then I'll bake it myself, said little red hen, and she did. Soon the barnyard was full of the smell of baking bread. Who would like to help me eat this bread? Asked the little red hen. We will, we will, we will, shouted all the animals. Oh, no, you won't, said Little Red Hen. You wouldn't help me do anything. I will eat this bread myself. Not so fast, said the socialist pig. You must not be greedy. You must share the fruits of your labor with the rest of the barnyard so that we can all have the same outcome. Then why would I ever want to bake bread again, asked Little Red Hen. Why, so you can give it to us, said the socialist pig. It's the right thing to do. And just like that, 
the pig snatched the bread out of little red hen's feathered wings and handed out pieces to all of the other farm animals until no bread was left, not even a crumb for little red hen. And guess what, boys? She never baked bread again. The end. I'm going to save my uh, corn shucks too. And uh, if you lay them flat and you let them dry out, it takes about a month or so, then you can use them for fall decorating. So what I'm going to do is after I get all my corn harvested, I'm going to wrap these up in a tarp and let them dry. Oh.